So Don and I are having our normal morning chit chat over his coffee and newspaper. <laughs> and um, we were talking a little bit again about the supercharging speeds and how fast you can charge your car. Right. I guess this latest update, even though it didn't say so in the release right. notes, uh, tweaked the charging profile again. So at very low percentage of battery, you get a really super high speed. Um, there's some videos out there on it now. I know um, Kyle over at Out of Spec Motoring was doing a test yesterday yeah. uh, on it. But the thing of it is, it's sort of like this uh, conflict here. We're going to provide you the ability to play video games and watch videos at superchargers. But we're going to charge your car from 0 to 60 or 80% so fast it'll make your head spin. Yeah. So how exactly is that going to work right. and we don't have an answer for that we were just kind of think wondering right so and i know that i've had my car charge too fast before or worry me that it would complete charging too quickly the last time michelle and i took the kids to outback and we were eating dinner right. and the car wasn't super close to the restaurant like i had to actually walk right. let's say two minutes to get back to the car i did not want it to finish so anyway, just throwing that out there. But what Don was really going to mention was in the newspaper this morning, he read an interesting article, more sun flying to cut carbon footprint. So what did that say, Donnie? Yeah, well, it was talking about uh, um, a family in Sweden that basically uh, historically took a plane uh, to fly on holidays. Um, this year they're taking a train. Uh, a, a series of trains to go on holiday across Europe um, that last year uh, the uh, forest fires uh, that they had in Sweden because it was so dry really woke up uh, the populace to the uh, some of the impacts of climate change and really have the people uh, trying to do what they can to uh, mitigate uh, climate change and the article uh, goes on to said that basically if they would have flew to their destination it would have taken 260 uh, uh, pounds of uh, co2 uh, but they the trains only going to take 5.6 pounds of co2 but the interesting thing was the uh, it quoted it, it did not say who which scientist but it just made an off the cuff remark that it's uh, a scientist says that the uh, 260 pounds of CO2 that a, a jet flight would have uh, used would take a significant chunk out of the 4,406 pounds of CO2 uh, per person that they feel is sustainable. That's the first time I've ever seen a number. Over a day, a year, oh, a month, a year. a year. Okay. Maybe it's a day. I, I don't know. know. Well, there you go. See, this article does not very, you know, give us the... But it, 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 it did make me wonder what is the, you know, in a typical American, a typical European... So I think Don will be researching yeah, that be today to because see. the article just asked, made more questions than it yeah, sort of answered. Right, but definitely, you know, I uh, certainly uh, we think about uh, CO2 and stuff like that, but, you know, you don't think about every time you uh, turn on a light bulb, that's a little bit of CO2, you know, when you get on your in your car. I mean, we all think about that a little bit, but, you know, how much really... Because uh, one of the big things that's important in Europe next year for car makers is that they are really turning the screws on the CO2 produced per kilometer. I believe it's going to go to like 96 grams per kilometer or something like that. I, I Maybe I don't understand the uh, everything, uh, the numbers, but this is what has motivated... Chrysler or FCA to join ranks or pay Tesla, they say $2 billion to buy Tesla's CO2 free footprint so they can average it in with the FCA fleet to meet this new 96 gram uh, target. And that uh, that is also why people like Mercedes and BMW, all these people coming out with these new electric cars right now are they're shooting for it because they have to make these 2020 
new CO2. In other words, it's been pretty easy because like 150 parts per million or something like that. Now they're going to turn the knob down to 96. They're going to cut it, you know, by a third basically. So uh, it's making it bite and it gets really hard to reduce it that far. So we'll see. But anyway, uh, I was, um, you know, think about uh, their, uh, the article does say that the airline industry is fighting tooth and nail uh, emissions tax you know they don't want to be taxed on their co2 and they uh, experts say they the air flight just the part flying on the plane uses two percent of all greenhouse gases in the world so uh, the flight is co2 intensive it said that a typical one um, one passenger on a um, plane uses as much CO2 as a quote unquote car half full. Uh, I guess that means if you have a four passenger car, t that means it uses the same as two people in a car. I don't know. Uh, You're going to have to do some more research. The numbers were a little bit, you know. Yeah, like we'll loosey. just throw out this concept with some loosey goosey numbers and, right. you know, the majority of our reading public won't care. So right. you go do the real research well, now, Donnie. But they did do well. They did convey that airplane flight uses more co2 than a typical taking a trip by car and certainly uses a way more than by train so they did convey that electric thought. train yeah, yeah electric train which europe would well, have europe has a lot of electric. right maybe, maybe so true over here but um uh in europe they have a lot of electric trains anyway uh just keep catching you up on the news hey 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 donnie hey, pretty girl so i wanted to talk about Amazon shipping for a minute. Mm. Three times in the last week, we'll say five to seven days, the UPS man in the extra long truck has bought an Amazon package to our house. Mm -hmm. Now Johnny might have a birthday coming up and I might have ordered a couple of things that I didn't need next day yeah. or even yeah. today really, but I um, let him come. So I s sort of perplexed as to what's going on. And apparently, you know, I hadn't paid any attention to Amazon saying that they were going to move to one day shipping on a bunch of items because I figured, well, out here in Fuquay, that'll never apply to us. You know, that free two hour delivery or some of those other things they have that were out in the sticks in comparison to like downtown right. Raleigh. So I wasn't paying it attention. But I was doing a little research and apparently the one day shipping really is rolling out. And apparently, Amazon has sort of switched some of their shipping away from USPS, the Postal Service, and yep. over to UPS. Because when Don went to greet the UPS driver this morning, he said he had more packages than he thought he could deliver today. And he, he wasn't angry at us in the driveway or anything, but he was just sort of already run down. And it was 10 o'clock in the morning, 1030 in the morning yep. for him. So I guess this brings up the point that... Um, Amazon Prime, it generates a lot of cardboard. We had touched on before the amount of cardboard that shows up over at the landfill. Yep. That's just all Amazon Prime. It's like a whole new industry of trying to recycle yep. Amazon Prime cardboard boxes. Right. And we all love the convenience, but maybe that's not the best um, thing for the planet. Right. So Don often, because he's such a good boy, yeah. he takes the digital um, credit and says that it can be longer shipping. Right. Tell me a little bit about that because I don't normally yeah. do that. Most of the time when you go to check out on Amazon, you get to the page and it allows you to pick, uh, you know, two day or, well, I don't know what it does, but in the past it was two day. Uh, or express and then they always had down at the bottom this well generally speaking had on a, some items at least on some items and the most of the ones that i ever ordered it said get a one dollar a free digital credit for five days shipping and you'll get the package you know they tell you the date which is usually like next week sometime well i almost always pick pick that because rarely do i want something in the next day or two if We're i do not ordering toilet tissue we need it tomorrow right and uh you know tools, tools. And stuff like that you know prod anyway long story short uh, most of the time i end up getting it 
before they said because something else is coming and they throw it in they the box. They throw it in the box. And it, that works out well. So, you know, I'd almost like the option that says, hey, uh, everything I order this week, you know, ship it where I have it on Friday or Saturday. You know, we could come up with a one day a week and it's just, you know, everything. Yeah, Don wants to say, I want my Amazon packages delivered, let's say Thursday. Once a week, yeah. On Thursday. I'm always home on Thursday. Thursday's not a busy day. Anything I order between. Right. When you ship it, and when you ship it again, put it in that box. You know, Amazon knows because of Prime Pantry, they know when the box is full. The, the box a human can carry based on the weight in the items. Right. So if it ends up being more stuff, just put it in two boxes that come on the same day. Right. But I'm really not thinking I want that big UPS in my truck, dr uh, truck in my driveway three or four or five Scares times. Scares cats. Scares the cats. It sets off the driveway alarm. He's got trouble turning around. We've had a lot of new drivers in the last week. They're not familiar with the driveway. Yeah. So they're running up the property or they're running backing down, into yeah. the driveway or they're doing crazy stuff. And right. we're having to like retrain new people about right. it's okay to come up and turn around. So it's just sort of frustrating. And then when you add in what we're doing to the planet, I think Don might be on to something about, you know, maybe instead of like we need this instant gratification society, let's get it tomorrow, let's get it in a few hours. Do we really need that? And could we throw several days worth of I'd like this from Amazon into one box and send it once a week? I think I, when I order now, I'm going to reevaluate um you know, how quick I ask for the stuff to come. Because I really don't usually need it the next day. I, yeah. re I really don't. And uh, I was happy with the second day delivery and it being a small box in our oversized rural mailbox. We've got a really big mailbox. The Amazon guy, he re the uh, postal guy, he rarely had problems putting stuff in the box. The, f the two times a month that he did, he'd bring it up to the house. Right. That I could deal with. But the big brown truck in and out of my my yard all the time and in and out of our neighborhoods where our kids are playing in the summer. Yep. I'm not convinced that's the best thing. Right. The uh, I, Look, I realize that they don't literally put my stuff in a box. It basically it stays in the virtual box. Right. You know, spinning around on a server someday. And then, uh, and then finally, they they have a you know they know what their throughput is. Somebody has an extra couple minutes. You know that there's a little small little gap here, so that's when that order hits, and then it fills in that little gap, so they utilize their capacity, get a higher capacity sure. there. That's how it works. I understand that, uh, but you know, uh, Walmart uh, can't do it like that because uh, if they want to. You know, I would love to go to Walmart once a week and pick up my stuff. Uh, that would be, you know, Marianne goes every day. But me, I fewer times I'd go out. You need something from Walmart, Donnie? <laughs> yeah, right. God, please <laughs> spare me. You can uh, look at Hot Wheels while uh, I'm in there. <laughs> I don't I don't want to do that. You know, I, I am the type, if I could, you know, pick up all my groceries, you know, drive up. The guy puts them in the car and I drive home. That'd be, you know, me and my frozen pot pies and pizza and ice cream. I'm good, you know. Uh, uh, it's not allowed to eat. <laughs> but I don't get to eat. Yeah, but that's what I used to eat. Uh, the, the, you have a beautiful wife that uh, cooks for you now. That's right. My girl, now. she cooks for me now. That's right. <laughs> Usually. Well, I could cook too, but God, then you have to clean up. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> this is something not right about all this. Um, and anyway, so all I'm getting at is, um, you know, this got to have it one hour. I want them to go the other way. I would rather than come out with plans. This is instead of trying to get it to me in the next 15 minutes. Uh, you know, uh, go the other way. You know, once a week is plenty for me. You know, twice a week. You know, Mondays and Wednesdays. Like I said, it, I'd find it, especially when I was working, it would be very handy to have a delivery day that we're going to come Wednesday afternoon right. or Saturday morning or Sunday afternoon or whatever the day is. You know, I can schedule around that. If I know you're going to be there that day, I, I can meet it. Because I used to, before Amazon and all that stuff, I used to have a terrible problem with uh, getting packages because the post office closes. The UPS guys, they wouldn't deliver. And, uh, you know, I would have to call up to the UPS place and make arrangements to go up there and pick up my package from UPS. And the post office, you know, they were closed. Uh, you know, I had to go beat on the back. Of course, it was back in small town Fuquay. That's, that's what's good. You just go beat on the back door and they come at you. <laughs> but, you know, now I don't think. They don't really want you to do that because uh, no, they didn't have Saturday not after, hours. Not after nine one one. No. Well, it's shipping up to be another interesting holiday season. I think. 
Yep. Yep. Told Don to turn off to go down to the new library. Wasn't blocked off anymore and we should check it out. And um, there is the new library, of course, which is not done. Don will get us yeah. over closer to it in a minute and I'll show you better, but... There's a 55 and older development going over in there on the right where we just were. Oh, wow, you can come all the way through now. Guayverina Community Library, and they have named this street Bramble Hill Drive. Well, certainly got a lot of glass on it. It does go through to the... Uh Oh, they're the Health and Human Services building yep. over there. Yep. Well, I don't know when it's supposed to open, but from what we're seeing here today, it honestly, it can't be too, too long in the future. Right. So I guess all the glass is on the, front. the east side of the building. Right. Like it would get morning light, but not afternoon light. Pretty oh. sure that's more west. Well, yeah, the skylight area, but the whole other side is sort of like glass yeah, anyway yeah. it's it's coming along it's coming along I you know a little bit we've been talking about Fuqua history this week it's really gonna be a a thing to have the library moved a mile and a half over here off of Main Street well, the other thing is this library looks to be five five times bigger I mean the other one is just Right. The interesting statistic from what we've heard is that the Fuquay Library has more um, more books passed through it than any of the other libraries in Wake County. And that's mostly because people like me, we order a book to the library, we go in, we pick it up, and then we, uh, we bring it back home. Yeah. We're not actually going in there and browsing and leaving. And I have to say the staff at the Fuquay Library does an excellent job with the children and their children's programs at that particular library. So, I knew we was getting the new high school over here, up here on the right, the new Willow Springs High School, but we're also getting a new elementary school, basically just across the street. And um, they've already got walls up and everything. I was telling Don about it, because he's by here two, three weeks ago and didn't notice it. But you gotta look quick and then there's the sign this is going to be e35 south lakes elementary school wow and the high school which is literally a half a mile up uh, old honeycutt road going east is uh ready for business this this fall yeah ready for classes fuquay high school bengals it's basically moving over here for a year or two years and then when their renovations are done which basically means they're going to level the school and rebuild it uh, like they did apex high school then uh will springs will take in new students it'll be a new separate high school but um i don't know it's ready to go it's another pretty day with some really pretty clouds in the sky didn't want to go back down John Adams Road with it paved that it would be too sad but I sort of decided that I guess the curiosity's got the best of me now and after all that talking about it over there at the museum the other day and I need to check it out so Don and I are over here in Willow Springs near where I used to spring excuse me Willow Spring <laughs> near where I used to live and um, not too far from where Michelle lives and we're gonna take a little drive down what used to be the country back country road um you know uh, homes is going in over here it's been sold out they've taken out a bunch of the vines for the vineyard and um this was the house we were talking about that i said oh they need to keep it it looks like nobody's home Oh, that's going to be so sad when they tear it down. When you come around the, from the other direction, this you know, you come around the corner, you see this beautiful house. Yeah. Well, sure enough, this is not a gravel road anymore. 
I just really, since I moved away, I just, I never would come over here in Ruby and I just didn't know they paved it. Because I've been down it hundreds of times in the van taking pictures when the kids were young enough to be in child seats. <laughs> they didn't have a choice but to sit there and watch their DVD while I took my pictures. I've got all kinds of wildlife off this road. Birds and lilies and dragonflies and butterflies and yeah. Well, I guess when they put in the road, they scraped a lot of the stuff up near the road, which was where the lilies were. So that's, um, you know, like I figured it won't be the same and it's, it's not. It's not. They used to be able to go straight through there and out. We had, was like two exits and people dumped a lot of, um, garbage down there and stuff all the time and did things back there in that little stretch so I guess it's just as good that they just closed that over because we really didn't need two exits from this road over here on the old stage we really we really didn't so I think up here in these fields we've turned around and coming back on John Adams from the other direction now um pretty sure this is some soybeans planted back here I only see just a couple new homes. This one here on the left and then the one Fred's son down there by the water at the other end. But I'm, I'm, I've heard and I'm sure it's right that the oh, yeah. winery and stuff is going away. They've already pulled up a bunch of the vines. They've got a for sale sign over here. So on our way back into Fuquay, I had Don turn into this neighborhood off Highway 42 because I was looking for that old house up in the woods. I think they bulldozed it down when they put this development in and I might be a little frustrated about that. But, so these are all KB Homes, Energy Star certified homes. I don't see any solar. I don't see any right out here in the middle of a field. It's got all these nice roof lines and there's no solar. It's just... It's just not. It's just kind of a bummer. Maybe a couple of these people, after they're established here a few years, they'll add some solar. But, um, yeah, I've seen a couple of houses over on 1010 where they were putting the houses in and they, they had solar right away. I really like that. Platform around the Oh, I told Don I wanted to come over here and go in the old train depot, which is Aviator, and check out Aviator and the train depot at the same time. And I think Dawn is going to ask Ruby to park, which is a good spot. She didn't offer it, though? Nope. Well, that sucks. Because you're up past it. Yeah. I think I'm far enough. But I think once I start going, she, I'm hoping she'll take over. But if not, I can do it. And this is sort of the problem with the park. You can't say to the car, I really like this spot. Can you not um, park here now? Yeah, I would prefer to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're parking and not me, well, Daddy. I did a very good job. Right. Well, Ruby was supposed to handle that for us, not us. But you did an excellent job. Yeah, but I took two times. More. Well, so. That's not the important part. The important part is yeah. that you got in the space. Yeah, well, I don't know I'm in that good. But it's good enough because the road swings That road, out. yeah, it swings away. There's like a shoulder on the other side of the parking space. The beer shop and I think yesterday the lady was trying to say that the Verena post office used to be in that brick building right there and then here's the smokehouse aka ribs and this is the tap house in the old um, train depot here we go
the nice guy serving us, he brought us a couple samples. This one, this one was shark bite, and this one was mad beach. <laughs> Don and I are not the best beer connoisseurs, but we're trying here. We're trying. This is very, um, I don't want to call it pedestrian, but this is, you know, nothing uh, one way or other. It's fine. Tastes yeah, okay. Yeah, this is a shark fight. Yep. It's, it's in the middle of the road. And then Mad Beach is the other one we were sampling. The first one he brought us out was Three Bones. If we have any more samples, we're not going to need a beer. So this part right here is the old depot, and it looks like the floor is the original and then down there down the steps and around the corner is part of the original building too but I believe this newer building section to the right is an there are bomb. cool signs and airplane paraphernalia all over the place in here engineer one who gets excited about things that no one else cares about and alcohol because no great story ever started with someone eating a salad <laughs> Yeah, this window is in the old building pictures. This too. I think it ends here at that entranceway. And the bathrooms and such were added on to the end. We've been watching Chive TV over here. It's pretty interesting. So there's the other depot building built in 1920. That one doesn't look like it's changed a lick. And uh, here's the train. Pretty much where it'll sit on the track for the whole weekend until it takes off again on uh, Monday morning. Freight door. This is a old, obviously an old door too. Ah, it's cool. Mostly filled with uh, air aviator <laughs> memorabilia, but um, you know, they really have preserved a good bit of the original building, even though they added on to it. We've stepped out behind aviator, this is the back side. Yeah, they got done adding on over here and finally decided they're going to build them a new building uh, one block away. So the A.V. Aber Smokehouse where they have all the ribs across the street from where we just were was the Verena Hotel. Interesting. We ordered the onion rings. They look good. is mostly glad to have aviator um, but there's a few folks that's got some opinions about all of the parking it's causing but over here was a tobacco warehouse they took down last year and this is where a whole new really big aviator building is going eventually last night I was reading that the building was stuck in permitting Donnie, your weekend project came. A hundred feet of. Oh, really? Yes. See? What is this supposed to do? Replace this. Oh, oh, oh. Go on. You have a good weekend, buddy. Do good too, at Taekwondo. Mom. We'll miss you. I'll miss you too. Bye. Bye. Don's been out here mowing the grass. We're supposed to get more rain tomorrow.